Warning, this video contains themes viewers may find upsetting. What's up guys, Javen back for another video on the Spoken Word Hub channel, you name it. Um, guys, I want to talk about um, something very, very serious. Something I watched that was very, very serious the other day on Panorama. I'm going to get straight into it. Um, guys, as I'm talking, please like this video, please. I, I, I really want people to see it. Please like the video. Why is it every time I, first of all, why is it every time, yeah? I sit in front of the camera, all of a sudden I get some dumb notification. Always the same, yeah? Yeah, please like the video and subscribe as well, please, if you're new around here. So basically, yeah, I watched a program on Panorama and it was about um, a special needs school in the area of Wirral, which is up north in England. I think it's near like, I want to say, is it near like Liverpool? Um, um, Wirral, so W-I-R-R-A-L. Um, and it was about, yeah, it was about, a, 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 it's called Life at Wirral, that's the name of the school, with people with special educational needs. Um, I I watched that program, it's on uh, Panorama, um, and it's half an hour, but that program is very disturbing. Um, it's very serious, and basically what was happening in that school is they were basically being um, mistreated, mistreat is too, vague, too low for me, they were basically being abused by staff members at the school. That's ranging from the mentors all the way to like even the head teacher was part of the abuse. Um, well, she was actually complicit in the behaviour, like she, complicit in the abuse, I should say, if, if she wasn't doing the abuse herself. She, she's just as bad, if not, I think she's worse, but I'll get into all that of what I was watching in a, in a, in a minute. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm describing the things that I saw in the event, but I think it's one of them shows that are so, that they're so bad, right? Even if I talk about what happens, it's not really spoiling it because it's like you have to kind of see it to believe it. It, it, it. It's one of those ones that makes sense. If you know what I'm talking about, it's one of those ones you have to see it to really understand what was going on. Um, so basically, yes. So I want to. I want to mention. I want to talk about it. So children mocked and placed in headlocks by staff at uh, special needs school. That's what happened in it. So a senior member at a special educational needs school captured by BBC Panorama. So what happened in that program, we had an undercover journalist go into that school for um, at least, I think, seven, I think I believe it to be seven weeks. And they were an undercover reporter and um, they were seeing what was going on in that school. So, um, yeah, they, they spent, I mean, they spent a good seven weeks. Um, so what was it? So this is what's so concerning. So that school actually was, um, they have a CEO called, he goes by the name of Alistair. Sava Mutu, I don't know who he is, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that well, um, well, but he's basically a former rugby player and he actually used to be, I think, the CEO of Bournemouth Football Club. Um, he, he actually ended up in the police, but he's, actually, he's now the CEO of the school. Now, his goal, he, all he cares about, he doesn't really care about he, um, the people in his school, um, the kids, he has, no, he has no interest in what's going on in their life or helping them. Um, be part of a fairer, inclusive society. He just cares about the bottom line of making money. So I'm not going to go into the order of, I'm going in random order, but the, the, the bottom line of he only cares about money. He's interested in making as much money as possible. Um, and also he, he even is quoted as saying in the program um, that he's going to make, that he's trying to make the head teacher um, minted. So what was happening in the school? He had mentors, and they looked young. I don't know how old they were, but I mean, I've got the report, but they're like, they looked at like these eight, seven, some of them looked as young as 18. But mental well-being, yeah, so I've got some of the reports, as you see it here. Mental well-being coach Dan Left called one child a flid to his face, while head, head of sport Ollie referred to a girl in the school as sketty. So these two idiots here, um, I think flid, I think flid, but from what I remember on the program of how I described it, it's basically a word for saying, calling someone like a retard or spastic. Um, that's basically what the word flid means. I don't know if it's a northern language, a, a, a northern slang term, I don't know, I've never heard of that word before, but he's basically, he, did, he, he clarified on, on the channel, that's basically what it means. He calls um, the girl who's also got a disability a, a sket, so guys, you know, you, you know what that means, it's basically like a slag, I mean, or a hoe, all these derivative terms to call a female. 
Um, you got the head teacher herself, um, life was real head teacher called Sarah Quilty, who did not respond to Panorama's request for comment. Now, what's so messed up about her? Yeah, is she actually witnessed one of the men, one of the mentors. There was a guy. There was a boy in the school, right? He went into. He came into the class. God, it's hot, man. You can see all that grease and sweat on my head. He came into the class and he drew. He drew like a, um, a male genital um, on his on on his face. If I, if I remember rightly, it was like, or he either, or he wrote the word big um, big cock, or he wrote the genital. He wrote. He actually drew um, a, gen, um, a male genital, genitalia on um, one of the students um, male students's um, face. And she literally walked by, walked past as it was happening, and then he said to her, "Did you see that, Miss?" And she's like, "Yes, I did." And then after in the program, it tried to say that she didn't, she didn't, she didn't, see, she didn't actually witness what happened. She's a damn liar. She saw it. She literally went past as he was doing it, and, and he even asked, "Did you see that, Miss?" Like, "Yes, I did," but she didn't care. She genuinely did not care. She genuinely did not care. It's so messed up. Um, back to the CEO who I told you who's who just who just gets out the money. He was actually sacked from the police um, after failing to declare debts during um, debts during vetting. You see, in that I'm not gonna lie. When you bring it all together, like he he was gonna always be dodgy. Um, Will Will Council has suspended all placements at the school. Um, what's very disturbing is so the school. So I'm going to, to report it for a second, right? So this is this is what's disturbing. Captured by the BBC Panorama Express. There was, a, there was a man who, who expressed a desire to drown a student in a bath like a kitten. Um, it, I mean, so, there was a, so basically, there's a, he had to, so basically, for more context, there was a man that he said that he had there was a student that was very difficult and he had a fantasy about drowning him or, 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 or potentially killing him. He had a fantasy about that, like a, he, it was so like messed up, but these people are generally so so weird that like, there's a guy that um there's a guy that was doing his work as well a student and the guy and literally um one of the mentors came in and started like grabbing him up gripping him up i think he tried strangling him and doing all them kind of stuff it's so disturbing um in the sports hall someone got flipped upside down um they got him and flipped him up turned, tossed him up upside down like feet up in the air put slammed him down on the floor and then he actually he, and then the boy got injured and then he said that he said I think he said to the undercover journalist I will just say that he hurt himself that he was um or like it, it was an accident or like um he was misbehaving and he, he got caught or something something just happened in that report it was so messed up you guys you, you have to go and watch this it, it's, 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 it's heartbreaking they spoke to the family members as well like their grandparents in this, um, and someone because one of the one of the kids has grandparents that look after them. They're the ones that take care of them, so that's who they were. That's who they liaise with. That, that's that's that they they taking care of that grandchild, like their own child. Obviously, his grandparents, but still, um, and they were like distraught. And one parent was so had no idea what was going on, and they thought that so they think that their children are safe, but really they're being abused. Um, one boy who said he was, I remember him saying that he was one of like the best, one of the best football players, he's one of the, yeah, the best football player in the world or something like that. And then one of the guys who's meant to be trained in, in like dealing with people with special needs or something along the lines, he said to him, you're, you're, you're the best, you're the best player in a disabled school. That's what she, this is what he said, you're the best player in a disabled school. Like trying to like diminish his confidence basically. I'm like this. I'm like this guy. These people are all sickos, man. They're all sick, man. They're all sick in the head, man. Like, I'm asking them questions. I don't know. I don't know what the undercover journalist was and wasn't allowed to do. But you know what was so mad about um, what I watched? Yeah, she didn't. The, the, the undercover journalist did not have to try so hard to find anything. It was literally so constant. There were so many countless or incidents that happened in such a small space of time. And remember, it's only half an hour. That. You can, you know, this happens on a regular basis. This happens on a daily basis. It's literally normalized in the school for people from the, the, the students being assaulted to them being verbally abused, emotionally abused, to people turning a blind eye, negligence, all them things. That happens every day in that school. I'm, in my head, I'm, I don't know what the, I don't know what the undercover journalist can and can't do, 
But I'm asking, I would ask questions like, why would you, why are you doing that? Or does, I'll be, I'll be trying to, I don't know, maybe I could blow, maybe I might be able to blow their cover or something, I don't know, but it was messed up, like, it made my blood boil. Like, I was so, I was so angry, I'm like, bro, like, you people are bullies, man. Picking, I mean, the lowest of the low, like, you're picking on defenseless young kids in school with disabilities and big um, disadvantages, and you're basically making society is already bad man as it is and wants to exclude people with any like differences or difficulties or and you wanna it's like the place where they're meant to be safe and feel secure like they're, they're probably better off in a mainstream school and even a mainstream school doesn't really take um doesn't always take care of any students that have any like differences or difficulties but they're better off in that place because bro they were it was like 24 hours it was like basically like they had they had they were able to abuse those those kids on tap man it was like it was literally so disgusting um what else is there this guy's this is guy's not a quick one man we gotta go in it um i'm looking i'm trying to say uh the council's funded obviously this school the open, see this is a school actually see this is what this is mad yeah Places at the school for, sex, for secondary school age children cost between fifty grand and hundred fifty grand a um, a year a year per child, depending on the school they need. We will we will council so the council for that school has paid out more than two point two million in total since the school opened in twenty twenty one. Offset has rate, rated the school good. Offset, oh my lord. I mean, so this is this is it. This is the report. Warning: This contains offensive language. During her time undercover, Panorama's reporter Sasha Hindle did not work, did work experience with sports staff at the school. She saw some staff try to do their best for for pupils, but for the most part, witnessed children being treated cruelly by the adults charged with taking care of them. In a recorded conversation with head of operations Paul Hamill, see this bull-headed egg here decided that he was gonna that his, the head of operations decided that he was gonna abuse the kids. He laughs and tells her the child he had fatted about killing had overheard his comments. Just the thought of squeezing him while he's scratching me, me, me arms trying to wriggle out, he recalls saying. The pupil was caught off sight for two hours, four days a week by two members of staff led by Mr. Hamill, who had earlier described the child as a little serial killer as, and said he deserved to sit in a room, a padded cell in his own for the rest of his life. He told the reporter that after another incident involving the same child who said to he had smashed up a classroom and threatened him. He threw him all over the place. But that on the paperwork, it was like I guided him effectively. You see? You see what I mean? When shown the footage, the child's grandmother, so remember when I talked about the grandparents saw this, described Mark, uh, not Mark, Paul Hamill as a violent, aggressive man who should not be around children. Um, June, so this is, See, funny that Panorama wrote to Paul Hamill about these allegations. He did not respond. Yeah, see how these people all, they all, they all, they all, they all got, they all got all this like energy for these little kids. But now when Panorama will investigate, they are oh, they're going to put a comment. Cowards, man. Definitely sort of bullies, man. Because if I, if, if I had children and they were doing this, well, I'll be put up to the school. Everyone's getting it. Everyone can get it. I don't care. I don't care. I know, I know they were put on the heels. I don't care if they're a man or woman, but anyone can get it. I don't care what it is. You're no way gonna sit there and abuse any child that I have, yeah? Let alone anyone like if I had a child with any like difficulties like that and I'm in their school. No, it's not happening bro. Like I will fully pull up. I'll pull up. I'll pull up to the school. Cause that ain't happening. So imagine this, right? During almost seven weeks at Life Wirral, the Panorama Report witnessed a mental well-being coach describing the school as full of retards and calling a teenager Teenager with dyspraxia, defensive term, fled. The same staff member saying that one people was behaving well because he had beaten him into, into being a bit of a bitch. Three members of staff using homophobic and sexist slam towards pupils, calling one a point to his face. Oh yeah, I forget he did tell you that. See, that was said. And describing him as a batty boy to another pupil. One of those staff members grabbing a pupil's head and drawing what another child close why it was said was a penis on his face. Remember I told you about that um, um, earlier in the video? Pupils at, pupils at the school being called it sketty, a slang term for promis promiscuous women. The head of sport putting a pupil in a headlock, mocking his reaction and then pushing him to the ground. 
Another staff member dragging a pupil who had been sitting at a laptop with headphones on out of his chair and into a headlock. Yeah, so that man says that there's a guy that was just doing work. So basically someone, a staff member just literally came out of him, he's doing his work, went to get, keep his head down, and he's, ran, he's going to a random headlock. Like, what? Bro, like, he's ratchet. The school CEO, CEO who had been sacked as a special police constable for gross misconduct saying he had used a police style restraint involving a pressure point on a child which had expletive nails him. Yeah? I mean... So, obviously the, um, was a, well, sorry, I lost, lost my train of thought. Bear, bear with me, guys. Yeah, keep, keep the tension, keep the tension. A like the video for me, please, as well, is important. I want people to see this. I want people to watch this as well, if they got time, if they got the time. Um, one of the one of the children um, got told to, told to get get their tits out um, by a staff member, while two others laughed. I mean, look at the state of this head teacher. This yeah, fucking hoe. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. Now, also you because I'm a hypocrite. Oh, you you called him no. This bitch, yeah. You're the head teacher. How are you? What? Why are you there? Why are any of these people in this profession? Why did you get into it? Do you remember, when, guys, you remember when I did the podcast, yeah? Age, ages ago. Yeah? When I used to do it when I did the podcast. And I, you, you, if you guys remember watching that um, show, it was about Lucy Let, Letby. And then in, if you watch the show, one of the, um, one of the questions that, 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 we, that we had here was why do some people get into certain professions? What's their motivation? Because this is a very specific profession, and it's a profession within a profession. It's a special, it's a special area within a profession. You know, you got police, you have um, nurses, hospitals, you got uh, education. But within education, you got special needs education, which comes under the education bracket. Rather than education, is a broad spectrum. You have a special, you have a specialized area. Why, out of all the things you can get involved in, did you choose to get into that profession? You target in the most one of the most vulnerable people in society and you pick on known people. You're weak. You're cowards. Those people are sick, man. Like why why get into it? Like what is your motivations? Why study and take all these exams and qualifications? Like what are your motivations? I generally wonder what goes for people's heads. Yeah? And in my yeah, I generally wonder what goes for people's heads when when they're dealing with it. So her name is so the head teacher um, Sarah Quilly. So Miss Quilly told her, told an undercover reporter, um, some of our staff can be a bit, a little get, be a little bit aggy with them, the pupils, you know, and get quite well up themselves. The fact that the head teacher is even saying that, that that in itself is an extreme red flag. Like a head teacher to say to someone, they could get a little bit aggy and wound up themselves. You're basically showing that these T people are not professional at all. Well, they're more than not, prof they're more than not professional, they're, they're abusers. But let's, let's go with it for, for a second. Because they're not, they're, obviously, listen, everyone's a human being, yeah? We're not saying that anyone's robots, but the fact that you can say, that you can say to someone, yeah, that they, they get a bit aggy themselves and they get wound up. You're, you, you're basically showing that you're implying that you know that some, some nonsense is going down or that these teachers are not responding the way they're supposed to be responding or not behaving right to how these students, whatever it is, like, what, what are you talking about? And as for this dickhead, yeah, Mr. He, so he says, I'm an entrepreneur, not a special needs uh, uh, specialist. So this guy, um, Alistair Sava Mitu, the CEO, he told her he had a big ambition for his life school business, saying he went he wanted a hundred schools as a kind of first billion pound educational division in the country. But what for though? Why why education? You even said that you don't why special needs? I don't understand it. Why? Why education? You've been a CEO at AOC, um, AOC Boomer Football Club, which is a, a, a professional football club. Yeah? This is a very particular area. Why are you here? 
Why did you even, why did you even want to get into the police? That's another one. You see what I mean? These people, these people, these people need to be, a lot of these people need to be investigated and vetted, bro. Yeah? He, he's recorded saying that head teacher Miss Quilty is going to be the richest head in the country, saying she's going to be so minted. Why do you, why do you make this woman so minted anyway? Mr. The guy also told our report that he had been nicknamed the Savage during his time as a special constable for Merseyside Police because he was the first to all. He was. See? Look at this. This is this guy. He's he, the first in all to. He was the first in all the trouble. This, see, this is disturbing. So, this guy's part of the abuse as well. So Mr. Sava Mutu, whatever the hell his name is, said the child had ignored a 10 second warning and when the boy felt to calm down, he had knelt him straight in and he hit the floor. I just did one pressure point and he was gone. Wow. Wow. Wow, this, oh my God. The school's been closed, yeah, so it basically suspended, people got sacked. But what, what I've realised about, what my problem with this whole thing is as well is, why is there not police, why is there not criminal investigations into this? Because if you think about it, if the children are being assaulted, bro, that's a criminal offence, bro. If you assault someone in the street, yeah, you get arrested, you can get criminal charges for assault. You can do time in jail. The f like, these are, I feel like, I feel like with all these establishments, yeah, it's like, unless someone kills someone in these establishments, they, it's like they seem to, because they're in like a controlled environment, I feel like when they get found up, on, when they get pulled up on their fuckeries, they get away with it. The worst thing that can happen to them is that they get suspended or fired or maybe have their license revoked for what, two, three years and they can get reviewed. Why is there no criminal proceedings? It, it's on footage. Now, they don't have to do their legal investigation, but it's all on footage. You can see the guy, you can see the guy Picking up on the students, turning them upside down, and slamming them on the, on, on, on the floor. The guy is basically getting bruised up or like he's hurt himself very badly or he's got an injury. And then I'll go cover that, cover that up. You got you got you got you got a student that's literally doing his work in class and you get the, you get, you're getting um, a, a mentor coming in there and head get, and put him in a headlock for no damn reason. Like bullying. Kind of thing that like, like some thing like, some kind of nonsense that bullies at school would do to someone. That's like giving on a very hard time. It's, it's a secondary school, that like year tens or year year nines or year ten are doing, yeah. To put me getting so peak. Like imagine the staff members are doing this, you know, to people with disabilities as well. You got them. You got them calling them. These, remember, these are not under age as well. You got them calling them. Are you calling? Are you comfortable calling a a a, 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 a school age girl um, uh, a skate and all, and all that kind of stuff? Like what are you doing, man? You are weirdos, man. Honestly, you people are so moist, man. I, I, made me mad. It made me mad. It made me mad, guys. I, I swear. And this is why, it, for me, yeah, my advice, this is why I say, it's very important that you can't trust anybody. You can't trust everybody because they specialise in a certain area. Because what will happen is, yeah, a lot of, when you send, a lot of people send their kids to certain places, the, a lot of them are just very trusting on the teachers because they're qualified, they specialise, they give you their backstory of how, how they're qualified, they studied this and they took their qualifications or their CBT or their sacred chick uh, trait, whatever that, all that rubbish, yeah? And these people have your children for five days out of seven a week. They spend more time with your children than you. You only see them for like, probably breakfast, dinner, maybe one episode of Coronation Street, and then, and then, and then, and then go to bed and then repeat the next day and then you see them on Saturday or Sunday. You got, you got, bro, uh, it's very dangerous, man. And you know what's the worst thing about it? Someone, because obviously, if there are a lot of them got all these um, disabilities, there could be a guy on the spectrum, there could be some people on the spectrum, or so far on the spectrum, where they're non-verbal. So they couldn't even, they couldn't even communicate what's going on. They're being abused in silence, and they're suffering in silence every day, and they, and they can't, they can't speak. It's sickening, man. It's sickening. But I don't understand why it comes to schools. If this was outside, there'd be criminal investigations. You're basically just child abuse. But then we don't seem to call it child abuse. We call it as our oh, children are being like mistreated. You are being, you're being abused. It's child abuse. You're abusing children. Imagine like, imagine a, um, a, a, 
Imagine uh, uh, um, an adult man just picking up uh, a 10 year old or, okay, well, 11 year old, because secondary school, right, or whatever it is, 12 year old um, boy or girl in the, in the street and started doing them things. They're getting rushed, or police are getting called or something. So, why is it because it's in a controlled environment? The best you can get is a, is a suspension. I feel like these establishments basically protect the people. Not that particular establishment itself, where it was in that case, but like just like the authorities, for some reason, it just doesn't seem to... Why are they not in handcuffs? Why isn't the head teacher in handcuffs for complicit? Why is it not questioning? I don't understand why these things don't happen like that. Maybe, maybe if someone's watching this as a teacher or understands how the educational system works, why these things, when it comes to in controlled environments, how are they not... Why does it come into criminal things? It's in, it, why? Like, I find it mad, because they basically, after the themes that have gone on, you've been, there's been a verbal assault, there's been homophobic language being thrown, they're using sexual remarks to underage um, children, they're being uh, physically assaulted, you get a guy on, on camera who's telling you that he had fantasized about killing the child. That's dangerous, man. That's actually scary. Because next thing you know, you can find out that he's, the child's dead one day, and there's been a cover-up in the school, it's like, oh, no, no, we just found him not breathing or some shit. That is scary, man. It's so scary. But anyway, guys, um, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Um, I, I, I genuinely would appreciate it. I would respond to everybody. Please like the video as well. I think you, yeah, get the algorithm going, push it out there as much as possible. And also, if you're new around here and you like this content and you want to see more, more of my videos from before and future ones to come, please subscribe. You know what to do. Anyway, I'm out. Peace.